A blowfish is one password to encrypt a message that that password can decrypt. This is called symmetric key encryption. So the first thing to understand is how your unique password affects the algorithm. So there's a couple of structures as part of the algorithm, the P array and the 4S boxes. And they're made up of a bunch of subkeys. Now the P array has 18 subkeys and the 4S boxes have 255 subkeys each. I'm only going to show you the P array in this example here to make my point because the other structures, there's, there's just too many subkeys to show on screen. So these subkeys are predefined in every algorithm. So every Blowfish algorithm starts off with the exact same subkeys and they're in these hex values here. Hex is just another way to represent numbers. It's just representing them in a base 16 form where our numbers are generally represented in base 10. So if you really want to think what these subkeys are, just think of them as numbers. I mean, that's going to give you, that's the best intuition you can have. Now, because encryption algorithms like hashing algorithms use bitwise operators to manipulate the numbers, I think it's better to represent them in binary just because it makes more sense to see these operations take place. I don't know, getting the exclusive R of two hex numbers, it's not going to be intuitive why the answer is what it is. In the P array here, I'm only showing the first two values as like showing 18 32 bit numbers might look a bit confusing on screen. But imagine we want to encrypt our message with a password like this. Now each of these characters are 8 bits long and look like this in binary. We take the first 32 bits of our key and exclusive OR into the first value of the P array and we replace that value. We then take the next 32 bits and do the same for the second value. Now because our key is only 64 bits long, we have to use the first 32 bits again on the third value of the P array and we continue until we've replaced all values in the P array. We do a similar thing with the 4S boxes, but we have to use Blowfish itself to do this. This is what's really cool about this, right? The analogy of encryption algorithms is you have a password that's a key and the algorithm is the lock. So it's the thing that you're locking your message up in. But if that's the case, then the P array and the S boxes are like the pins inside your lock that your key is precisely designed to move out of the way. And you know, like just seeing that happen mathematically like that for me was really cool because like obviously I had studied a bunch of hashing algorithms and I, like I knew how to destroy information, but like to actually like destroy it in such a way that you can undo that is, uh, it's really cool. I've done some videos on bitwise operators before on my channel, but just to recap what I mean by exclusive R, the answer will only be one if both bits are different. So one and zero will be one, one and one will be zero. If you have two digit numbers like this, where the first bit of the first number is compared to the first bit of the second number and so on. So when you see some of my examples here where I'm operating on 32 bit numbers, which you're going to see a lot of if you watch some of my other videos, hopefully you'll have a good intuition of what's happening here. By the way, this calculator I'm using is an app I wrote to play around with these concepts. It's a free app that's got one or two ads in it, but I think it's a really good learning tool for this video. And by downloading it, you're really helping me support this channel. And if you like this video and you think it's helped you and you found it useful, I'd really appreciate any help you could give me. Now that we have our keys generated, let's encrypt a message. Take a message like this, A, B, C, A, A. Each of these letters can be represented in binary by 8 bits. Notice the 1st, 4th and 5th. They're all the same because they all represent the letter A. We have a total of 40 bits here, but what we need is we need 64 bits for the algorithm to work, so I'm just going to pad the rest of this with 0 to get it to the correct size. Then we split this into two parts called XL and XR. Each of these contain 32 bits of the message. So in the corner on the left up there, you can see the algorithm. I'm going to follow this and highlight each line of this as I step through it to make it easier to follow. So take the first value from the P array, I'm going to call this P1, and get the exclusive OR of it into XL, and replace the old value of XL with it. Next we're going to run XL through the F function. Now the F function looks a bit scary here, but it's actually not that bad. Divide the input, which is XL, into 4 pieces of 8 bytes each. Now each of these bytes represents a number between 1 and 255. So we're about to use these numbers to get specific indexes from our substitution boxes. Get the value at index 150 in the first S box, which is what you see here on the right. Do a similar thing for B's index in the second inbox, which is 132. Add these together with mod 2 to the 32 so that you don't get like numbers bigger than 32 bits. Then get the exclusive or of the result of this and C's index from the third S box. Add this with mod 2 to the 32 of D's index from the fourth S box. Now get the exclusive or of this result into XOR and replace the value of XOR with this. Then all you have to do is repeat this process 15 more times and keep swapping XL and XOR around. 
And from the final two values of our P array, you just get the exclusive OR into XL and XR. And congratulations, you've just encrypted your message with your key. To decrypt a message, start at the 18th value of the P array and just run Blowfish again, except this time you're stepping backwards through the P array. And this undoes all the cryptographic transformations and leaves you with your original message. Sometimes when you watch a video like this, and I'm guilty of this too, I feel like I understand the topic more than I actually do because there's something about watching a video on something kind of it, it kind of like playing a little trick on you because from watching this now you should have an intuition about how blowfish works but the best way for you to solidify your understanding of this is to take the next step forward and I think you should go to this website here by Bruce Schneider because right? I've had to read a lot of like articles and like papers on a lot of different algorithms over the years as I've you know gained an interest in this and Try to understand, I'm not a mathematician, I'm barely, not even really a computer scientist, I'm just a programmer who's just interested in this stuff and who takes the time to investigate it. So when somebody curates information in a way that's really pleasing to read and it's really not convoluted and it's it's explaining explaining concepts really simply, I think I really appreciate that. And I, I think for you, after watching this video, you should now have an intuition of what's happening that reading his paper there is going to be really beneficial in building up your understanding of this. Because I think there's a difference between knowing something and understanding. And, you know, you can know the words, but to understand it, I think you have to wrestle with the mechanics a bit. Now, that calculator app I showed you, uh, it's got a game mechanic to it as well. And the game mechanic is trying to reinforce the concept of bitwise operators and binary addition. And the reason for this is because I'd, I'd like to figure out a way if I can use games to kind of solidify mechanical ideas because that was always the goal of this YouTube channel and it wasn't until I went into designing games that I finally figured out that I could kind of bring all these things together. So if you're someone who's new to this stuff and you don't really understand encryption and you don't understand these like binary operators, I'd like you to like just try the calculator and play the game for a few rounds and comment in my blog below if you think it's useful because I don't know if it's a useful learning tool. I, I think it is because what it's going to do is it's going to help you reinforce these mechanical ideas over and over again. And I'm not trying to say this is like a fun game. This, this game isn't designed to be fun. It's designed to be valuable in helping you understand something. So maybe it's useful and maybe it's not. I don't know, but I'd like some feedback. And I'll put a link in the description here where you can give me feedback on that if you want. Because I think there's real value in games to get across these like mechanical ideas. And I'm me personally, like my hobby or my goal at the moment is to try to figure out how to bridge that gap of understanding, you know, to make things easier to understand. And I'm trying to use games as a way of doing that, kind of like the way I try to use this YouTube channel. Although that didn't work, so this game mightn't work either. <laughs> but like, I don't know, I don't know.